How am I even supposed to know what I'm doing? I just quit the game. Okay. This one I'm really excited about. The original One X Player handheld gaming PC came out of absolutely nowhere as a heavyweight contender against more established players like Aya and probably more importantly, GPD. But one of my issues with it was that while the specs were really good, Intel processor, XE graphics, I actually found the size of it to be eh, a little on the bulky side. Well, now they're back with the One X Player Mini that immediately is a huge ergonomic improvement. Okay, sorry, 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 let's get focused. Let's get focused, let's get focused, let's get focused. So we got our USB Type-C charging cable. Presumably this is a USB Type-C wall wart. Yep, holy bananas. 20 volts, five amps? This is a hundred watt charger? Freaking a hundred watts in the palm of your hand. It is, it's gallium nitride. I kind of figured it would have to be at this kind of power density. Oh, the contours are nice. Now it doesn't have the same kind of low profile that you get out of something like the Aya Neo. You can see it's substantially thicker, but the screen size is the same. The actual width is only marginally greater. So you can see that it's just a touch wider. The height is nearly identical. It's a lot thicker, but in a meaningful way. Like see this, one of the issues with the Aya Neo is that you have to kind of like claw grip it, right? The team over at One X Player figured, okay, well, let's just mold those so they fit the hand really nicely. I actually, I think they've done a great job of the ergonomics here. It looks like we've got an intake at the back, vent on the top, just like on the Aya Neo. And in terms of IO, they're quite competitive. It looks like they're gonna come out ahead of the Steam Deck. So we've got USB Type-C on the bottom, along with what look like guides for a dock, though there's no dock included with our particular unit. Another USB Type-C on the top. This is great because unlike the Steam Deck, that means you'll be able to charge the device either from the bottom or the top, depending on what works better for you. It's got a USB Type-A. It's really nice to be able to just plug in a keyboard real quick, type something. Analog triggers. This was one of the major advantages for the One X Player original versus the Aya Neo. Now Aya has since upgraded with analog triggers. So the 2021 Pro version has that, but if you're into a longer travel, the One X Player Mini looks like they're out ahead there. Joysticks feel pretty good, not super low profile. I think they've done a pretty solid job of the D-pad. Nice short travel, very responsive feeling. And the ABX wise, actually same thing. By the way, if you're wondering where I got this sweet hoodie, LTTstore.com, obviously. It's a terry cloth inside, which <clears throat> has the added benefit of being really great for wiping screens. <laughs> keyboard button. Ah, oh, see, it's the same thing on the Aya Neo, where it brings up the crappy keyboard. So this is the this is the better one. You want to bring up this one. Wow, to my eye, the One X Player Mini is actually a little bit brighter. This might actually be more important to me. How dim can it go? It looks like both of them are at a very similar level here. This video is brought to you by Vessi Footwear. Vessi Footwear is known for being lightweight, easy to pack, comfortable, and most importantly, water resistant. Designed to keep you moving, Vessi released their new everyday move shoes with enhanced breathability and added support. The style is perfect for the adventurous or those looking for something sportier. They've got a pull tab to make putting them on and taking them off super easy, vegan suede lace cages, extra midsole cushioning, and the same water resistant Dymatex technology, so you'll wanna wear them everywhere. Keep your feet dry and save 20 25 bucks with our offer code short circuit at vessi.com slash short circuit. Okay, now we're getting into one of the other big differences between the One X Player Mini and the competition. Instead of going with a 1280 by 800 display, they've gone with 1920 by 1200. So you get that nice taller aspect ratio and you get the additional sharpness of a full HD display. It looks like there's a, like a back to desktop button. I like that. I like that a lot. It's on here. Oh, it like crashes? Yeah. I mean, I feel like we should give it a chance if it's sitting here optimizing, right? Let's get some other games here. A big one for me for evaluating controllers is Super Meat Boy. It gets a little loud, not as loud as the Neo when it's at peak loud boy. They're both pretty loud. <laughs> it's really cool having this kind of performance in your hands though. Like, do you guys see that? Don't take that for granted. Switching back to the Windows desktop, firing up Forza Horizon 5. Now I'm in Super Meat Boy. 
Guys, this is a full-fledged freaking PC in my pocket here. I guess now's a good time to talk about the actual specs of this thing. So it's running a Core i7 1195G7. And so we can expect turbo speeds as high as five gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM, probably 42, 66 megahertz. Yup, it's got a one terabyte SSD, AX201 Wi-Fi. So what is that? Is that 6E? I believe so. Man, I have not played this game in a while. But what I'm supposed to be doing is evaluating the controller. And I really like it so far. I'm gonna try the D-pad as well, actually. Positioning of the D-pad, not great. The benefit of those ergonomic humps is that it's a lot more comfortable, but really only if your palm is actually on them. And on the D-pad, it's not really. How do I feel about that on the Neo? Honestly, on the Neo, I don't find it as bad because you're mostly supported here. Although I do find this corner gets kind of sharp, especially due to the weight. So that's a factor to consider. This is only 50% done. The Neo was done. Can you look up if there's any way to skip the Horizon 5 intro cinematic, Jono? You have to edit the game files. Did the One X player just crash? 80%. At 80%, it just, the game's just gone. Uh, and warranty voided. Oh, interesting. No One X player, not glue. It's more like double-sided tape, but still. Well, here's the inside. We're looking at a 40.25 watt hour battery. So that's a little less, about 10% less than the INEO. Got our CPU cooler. Oh no. Oh guys, why? So what I had in mind was I wanted to take a drive that had already been through that optimization process and see if it would just run the game if we could skip it. But I don't think that's gonna be easy to do here. I think we just have to say, okay, Intel has some driver issues to get sorted out with XE graphics still. What a shame. Nice robust looking mechanisms for the shoulder as well as the trigger buttons though. By comparison, the shoulders on the IA Neo are not as durable. You can see they really could have made the unit substantially thinner if they didn't want to have these nice big grips. Uh, um, <laughs> uh -oh. All right, let's get our volume rocker back on there. And this volume's a rocking. Well, that went back together nicely. Hopefully it still works. That's one nice thing about having Radeon graphics, man. Boy, are they ever better than Intel's onboard drivers. You know, I think I was wrong before. The 1080p class display is noticeable. It, it, it's sharper. Where the heck is my dongle? Now this is cool. This is a benefit of any more open style device, like the IONEO, like the Steam Deck, like the One X Player Mini. Being able to just take a standard Type-C connector, of which it has two, plug in a dock, or a dongle, and boom, HDMI out, ethernet, USB 3, SD card reader. And I'm just gonna turn the Wi-Fi off because otherwise Windows just gets too stupid. And there you go. Now it goes up. I have an extra screw. Crap. Oh, no, 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 it's all good. I didn't actually do up the rear screws. All right, now we got some games running on here and this looks like absolute butt. It's so blurry and crappy. I've seen this before. And I don't know if it's to do with the fact that most of these are using vertical displays that are turned horizontally, which they are, because these are typically tablet displays, these seven inch displays. But watch this, if I switch to borderless, boom, it's sharp, fixed. Like borderless full screen. Why, why you do this? Well, I guess we're gonna have to run it native res then. And this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, if I'm not near any other vehicles. Okay, that settled in a little bit. So I'm getting about 65 FPS, dang! Not bad, looks great. Boy, is that ever sharp. Okay, so the 1920 by 1200 screen, not a problem so far. Let's try something else. How about some Doom Eternal boys? No Intel drivers, not supported. Let's give it a chance. The only reason I'm even trying this again is because I heard that the issue has been resolved. Here we go. Really? This will be our head to head against the Neo 2021 Pro. So I've got Witcher 3 running right over here. That's another really cool use case for these kinds of devices. You got your emulation, you got your running casual games directly on the devices themselves. And then of course, streaming from a nearby uh, gaming PC over Wi-Fi. Super cool experience. Okay, why is borderless window like out here? Intel has got some scaling issues to figure out in their driver here. Cause that basically means we're stuck running at native res. This is worse. <laughs> 
How am I even supposed to know what I'm doing? I just quit the game. So what do I need to set it to then? Okay, cool. Now we can get it running apples to apples here. So assuming the game will run things. Okay, okay. We had a little bit of a hitch coming into it there, but that's looking a little more promising. Driver issues like the display scaling thing need to be sorted. Okay, we got a little hitch there. So you can see very, very similar kind of smoothness. Both absolutely playable. For cost reasons, the Steam Deck is gonna come out ahead of either of these, but the big difference is that the Steam Deck ain't shipping. These are in my hands right now. So guys, if you wanna check out the One X Player Mini, we're gonna have it linked down below. Super cool device. Of course, a great middle ground for ergonomics is the Switch OLED, which has the same size screen, skinnier than the Ioneo, even at its thickest. Banana for scale too. You should get it on lttstore.com, short circuit banana. Get subscribed to Short Circuit. I think that's it. That's all. Blah, 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 blah.